네, 안녕하십니까. 저는 멜리사이라고 해요. 반갑습니다. <웃음> 네, 그 Korea Entrepreneurship Foundation가 저에게 이렇게 초대해 주시고 이렇게 여러분 그 이렇게 어, 기업가 정신에 관심이 어, 가지고 게, 어, 가시는 분들을 만나게 돼서 어, 깊은 감사드리겠습니다. 어, 오케이 그러면은 어, 이제부터 제, 제 한국말로 어, 모자라서 영어로 하겠습니다. 죄송합니다. <웃음> 아, 다음에 다음에 한국말로 할 거예요. I promise. <laughs> so, uh, today has been a very um, interesting day. Thank you for all the presenters before me. Uh, very interesting discussions, and it has been a very good Hangugo uh, Tutki Yonsup for me. <laughs> That's why I will start by teaching you some Finnish. So, uh, in the Finnish language, Onni means happiness, fortune, luck, and blessing. And um, these are all things you need to create new innovations. You need to be in a happy place. You need to have some luck and fortune. So uh, that's why I decided when I established my company two years ago that I will change the uh, place of the two letters, O and I, and have my company name as Onnivation. So it's a new word that I have launched a couple of years ago. Uh, I think this uh, was already explained to you, that if you go to my website, you can find the slide set with uh, the notes in Korean as well. So, that's uh, a practical thing. Um, but about the uh, presentation outline, so I was asked to uh, come from Finland to tell you a little bit about, um, about the Finnish uh, 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 entrepreneurship education and the ecosystem that is uh, around uh, startups. So I'll first quickly introduce myself and tell you a little bit about the recent reforms that we have had in Finland in education. And then uh, go a little bit deeper into the uh, ecosystem and the um, uh, education uh, system itself. And then uh, last I will present an example, excuse me, an example of, of uh, a new concept that I'm, I'm working on, uh, on how to uh, use school exchange programs as platforms for entrepreneurship education. I will be presenting a case to you. So, uh, a very official mission for my company. I want to create connections between Finland and Korea, especially between uh, teachers, educators, policy makers, uh, students, uh, businesses, so that they can come together and create uh, great new innovations uh, together. In reality, what does this what does this mean? So I uh, I um, is this working? Well, uh, you see, there's a picture of some Koreans who have come to visit Finland to learn about the education system. Uh, I also run a cafe in this uh, high school that I, I work together with also on the entrepreneurship uh, program. Uh, I run summer schools uh, for Korean children. And the latest project you see on the, on the right hand side, I'm working on a book about the entrepreneurship uh, education and startup ecosystem in Finland. Together with MJ, uh, Myungji, So Myungji, so she's... Uh, She's a Korean who has uh, a degree from, from Korea uh, in uh, um, furniture design and uh, has been studying in Aalto University as well and is now working in the Aalto Ventures program. So together with her we are working on this exciting project. Uh, myself, my background is uh, uh, my education. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, international business and then I have uh, Top that off with a with a master's degree in Korean studies. So Helsinki te hakkio, so Hanguk haguro chorap hesunika chakum chakum man Hanguk mal hasike desunida. And um, I've been working pretty much my whole career in in uh, export and investment promotion in publicly funded organizations. Uh, 
the last 10 years in S4 Innovation Garden, which is uh, kind of like the Pangio Techno Valley of, of Finland. And uh, as mentioned, uh, two and a half years ago, I, I decided to become an entrepreneur myself. So here we are today. Um, so, uh, education in Finland. What are the recent reforms? Uh, we have just uh, taken into, uh, into use a new uh, curriculum, a national um, curri curriculum. It's taken, been taken uh, into use gradually between 2016 and 2019. Um, as, uh, as you can see from the picture, the transversal competences is a key word and working life skills and entrepreneurship are at the very core of, of the new uh, uh, curriculum. Um, <clears throat> Finland is often portrayed in international media as a uh, country where we have uh, no subjects in school, uh, we have very short days in school and very little homework. Well, the first one is false, because we have subjects are actually mentioned in the national curriculum. But it is also mentioned in the national curriculum that at least one multidisciplinary uh, learning module has to be done, carried out uh, in one school year. Um, <clears throat> the second one that we have short days, I think that's a relative uh, question. Uh, for Finnish people and kids, uh, uh, school day from 9 to 4 is a very long day and I guess it's not that long here in Korea but uh, that's, that's a relative question uh, and of course then the homework depends much on the learner how much work they, they do to, to learn and understand the things that, that are on the, on the um, uh, um, uh, 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 curriculum um, <clears throat> I think um, the, the key questions that, that I, when I meet Korean uh, visitors to Finland or when I'm in Korea, the, the, there are several topics that come up every time. And I think uh, one of them is the, the sort of uh, question of Korean way of doing things top down and the Finnish way of doing things uh, bottom up. So I think one good example of this is how the new curriculum is, or curriculum in general, is implemented in Finland, is that, that the government has, the public sector does define the curriculum, but when it goes down all the way to the classroom, the individual teacher has a lot of freedom on how to, how to carry it out. Uh, other questions are sort of, community-driven activities, assessment, whether it's about uh, uh, students' assessment in schoolwork or startup uh, being successful and their survival rate, this is a question that is often raised. Um, then um, uh, another, another issue is failure, that how to tolerate and, and uh, allow, give room for, for failure for people to, to learn. Uh, so, I think this is pretty similar probably all over the world. Uh, fourth Industrial Revolution, 21st uh, uh, century skills, um, phenomenon-based learning, project-based learning, uh, uh, student-centric learning. So uh, these are, I think, all things that we, we have in common. Another uh, major uh, reform in the uh, Finnish education system uh, took took place in uh, 2010, um, when we had uh, three universities, uh, Helsinki School of Economics and Business Administration, Helsinki University of Technology, and then the University of Art and Design. They were merged into one university, which is now called Aalto University. The main campus is in Espo Innovation Garden, where I used to work, well, where I still actually work in the cafe I'm, I'm working in is still there, and my office is there as well. Um, but the idea being there that, that having this multidisciplinary approach uh, is, is uh, a way to foster more innovation and entrepreneurship. And as you can see, the, there are good numbers uh, already uh, regarding entrepreneurship. 2,000 students have uh, gone through the Alta Venture program, which I will talk about a little bit later, 
half of the, the startups that come out of universities in Finland come out of Aalto uh, University or the community. And then <clears throat> there are about 100 companies uh, coming out every year from the university. Um, before going into the uh, entrepreneurship education system, just a quick, quick overview of, of the education system in general. I think it's pretty standard, it's not, not that uh, different from, from other countries. Uh, what I do think is good to always keep in mind if, if you think of, of doing things together between Finland and Korea is the annual sc school cycle, so our semesters don't go in the same, same rhythm. So that's uh, just a sort of uh, fun fact to know. <clears throat> also, I think it's good to, good to connect the involvement of the entrepreneurial mindset into the, the history of Finland. So after, um, after the Second World War, we had to work a, a lot to pay back our uh, war debt to Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union had a very strong role, a big role in the Finnish economy. And then when in 1991 the Soviet Union collapsed, we had this new, new phenomena, academic unemployment. So people with university degrees all of a sudden were not guaranteed a job for life anymore. And at that time entrepreneurship was the last resort. You know, if nothing else, then I will become an entrepreneur. And, and then gradually the Nokia era started in, in, in Finland and then around the same time when the student uh, activities, when Alto Entrepreneurship Society, a student-run uh, non-profit was established in 2008. At that time the transformation of Nokia had already started and when by uh, 2011 the device business was sold to Microsoft, uh, there was an interesting sort of phenomena that, that the young generation was thinking that, oh, I never want to work in a corporation, it's boring, I want to be in a startup. And then at the same time, people with uh, many years careers in Nokia had to, had to leave. And for many of them, the entrepreneurship uh, came up as an opportunity to actually fulfill their dreams. That Many of them, of course, established companies uh, around the IP that, that, that was in, in Nokia, but uh, many of them also established totally companies in totally different fields. And then today we are uh, uh, in a world or place where, where we have entrepreneurship as, as an official uh, element in the national curriculum. And I could uh, sort of show my own family as an example. My, my father, in 1993, uh, he was affected by this, uh, this uh, economic downturn and he had to become an entrepreneur. It was not a choice that he made, but that was the only thing at that time that he could do. He became a very successful entrepreneur, uh, uh, so no harm done there, but it was, it was a difficult time. But then me, uh, after a long time in, in sort of public, almost pub well, publicly funded, uh, organization, organizations. I decided, okay, I want to become an entrepreneur. So I made the made the conscious decision to 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 change uh, my career path. And now my 18-year-old uh, daughter, uh, when she started high school, she decided on the school based on where she can get the uh, education so that she can become an entrepreneur. <coughs> Uh, here are some, some examples of companies that have been established by middle school or high school students. Uh, to give you some numbers, uh, so Junior Achievement uh, had this national competition every year and this year they had 26 companies uh, from uh, uh, middle school and then 38 companies from, from um, high school participate, just to give you an idea of the numbers. Then, uh, if we go to the entrepreneurship education in uh, universities, so I will take uh, Alto University as an example. And in this picture, you can see, <coughs> excuse me, you can see uh, on the uh, on the left hand side there are things that are d done by the university, and then on the other side there are things that are are run by by students themselves, and then they they inter intersect. Um, 
So there are uh, community uh, uh, spaces like uh, the A grid uh, space. Then Alta University has different departments where product development and, and uh, design thinking and uh, um, entrepreneurship support is is uh, uh, offered. Uh, and then there is Alta Ventures program, which is the 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 main sort of entrepreneurship education program within Alta. Uh, then Startup Lifers is, is a joint effort between the university and uh, the students. So that's an internship program where the, the Alta Entrepreneurship Society organizes, matches uh, students who don't have a startup of their own but want to work in a, in a startup. They match uh, these students with uh, startups in Silicon Valley. And then the university gives some support for the, for the travel expenses and also helps with the visa uh, application process. But then the uh, totally other things uh, that are, or the other things that are totally run by the students are Startup Sauna, which is a physical space, but also an accelerator and incubator, uh, and Kiwas acceleration program. And then Junction and uh, Wave Ventures are hackathons, and then <coughs> Slush, you might have heard of uh, as one of the biggest uh, technology conferences in Europe. So that started around 2008 with 250 participants and I think <coughs> last year they probably had something like 15, 16,000 people join from all over the world. Uh, just to name a few companies that are, are uh, connected to the auto community, you might know Supercell with Clash of Clans and uh, Robio with the Angry Birds, the gaming companies. So um, the, these, these are companies where either the, the, the founders have are alumni or, or then they are uh, coming out of the research activities of the university or then are currently very strongly sort of engaged in the Alto uh, ecosystem by, for example, mentoring. Also, uh, how many of, has anyone been to Finland? Finland is a car, okay, not that many. So I think it's good to sort of make sure that everyone understands how small Finland is. Our population is 5.6 million. So, so 5, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. <laughs> Uh, so, to give you uh, an idea of the scale we are talking about, so a total of uh, the total number of companies, uh, how many employees there are, their total turnover, and how many jobs they offer. Uh, there are uh, a few state owned companies, and I think one important uh, number on this slide is this 30% of uh, companies in the Helsinki region are established by immigrants. So in Finland, as in, in Europe in general, the, the immigration is, issue is, is a very, very uh, big one. And, uh, and we can see in Finland how uh, immigrants are, are a very, uh, how should I say, entrepreneurship, um, they are entrepreneurship minded. And if, if you look at the size of the companies, so micro companies that have less than 10 employees uh, make up 93.3% of, of the uh, 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 total number of companies in terms of, of size. And only 0.2, it doesn't even, I didn't even get it to show on the, on the uh, graph, the 0.2, that those are the, the corporations uh, providing uh, job opportunities. So now this complicated picture, uh, I, I try to uh, explain the, the uh, ecosystem around entrepreneurship education and, uh, and startup ecosystem in general. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just want to show that we, ha we have these players who are providing networking services, who are uh, investors, there are clusters that just are communities that, that uh, are um, gathered around a specific uh, technology. Uh, we have the education uh, uh, programs and then um, 
uh, the soft landing, which means publicly funded organizations like you have Potra here and uh, these different uh, export and import uh, investment uh, promotion agencies who help international companies come to Finland and who are uh, helping Finnish companies go abroad. So all these, they are a nice mix of public and private companies and they, they work together. And then when you look at which player is relevant in which part of the, the growth path of a company, you can then, then see that some of them overlap a little bit. But if you Google these, these logos, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll get uh, some more information about, uh, about them. And I think uh, one thing that is um, um, often we Finns like to tell uh, foreigners that, that, or people who come to Finland that, Finland is a club, not a country. It's so small that anyone can, within two, maximum three layers in, in his or her network, get in touch with a minister or with, with a politician. So it's very small and very agile too. And then of course we have the support system for, uh, from the public sector. Uh, a startup grant, which is actually a, an unemployment benefit, so it's given to the person, uh, not, not a company. Uh, then there are salary subsidies, which from a startup's point of view are very good uh, uh, opportunities to test candidates and to minimize the, uh, lower the risk of a wrong recruitment. Then Business Finland provides different kinds of funding services, uh, expertise, uh, expert services, and uh, also nowadays quite new this uh, startup visa, and it has come together with the immigration situation that there needs to be a, a fast track for people who come to establish companies in Finland. And then there is a, co a government-backed uh, uh, loan system that uh, the company is given a loan, and then if if you fail and you're not able to pay back, then the company will will. Uh, sort of have your back. And now to the to the exchange program that I was um, I was uh, telling you about. Uh, <clears throat> um, so um, as I mentioned, I, I have a cafe in one Haukilahti High School in in uh, Espo Innovation Garden. This uh, school is uh, quite special because it's a pilot program between. Uh, Alto University and the city of Espoo, uh, where the idea is to uh, pilot a concept called school as a service. The idea being that university and high school share resources, uh, chemistry labs, uh, uh, spaces, courses, and also um, uh, develop new projects around entrepreneurship. So I, work, I have the cafe there, but I'm also together um, developing uh, entrepreneurship education programs with them, and also this exchange program uh, pilot that we had uh, with EU um, High School in, in April this year. And I have to say, first of all, that it was, it was a great success. It was a wonderful experience for everybody, and uh, we have... Uh, um, uh, 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 Jang Jung Hua Te Pionim from OEC, uh, the Open Entrepreneurship Center uh, CEO, and then um, uh, Kim Ju Yeon uh, Son Seng Nin, who we I really need to thank because without them we couldn't have done this done this program. Um, and you probably know EU uh, school here in in Korea, so I'll uh, just say that it's it's also a new kind of school with with uh, strong support from, from parents in the very beginning. And <clears throat> we, were, um, we were here in, uh, in Korea for one week. We had a very tight and, and interesting program. We had a possibility to stay with the EU high school students and families. And we visited several companies and uh, 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 venture uh, this uh, startup hubs. Uh, and then, of course, this, this, was, uh, this was a project that needed to be funded. We had certain expenditure, and we then were able to fund it uh, from money that the parents uh, paid. But then the sponsors and fundraising event is where the, 
exchange program is tied to uh, entrepreneurship education. So we had a fundraising event, we had bibimbap, Pe Finnish people love Korean food nowadays. So we organized uh, uh, this event for about 70 people. And then um, we had the sponsorship packages for, uh, for companies. So we had a couple of companies and Alta University support us. And just to show what kinds of elements yeah, we had in the, in the different uh, packages. Um, so how is this connected then to, to this new curriculum and entrepreneurship uh, training? So if we look at the different, different uh, uh, transversal uh, uh, competencies and think of a multidisciplinary um, uh, learning module, you can see that that the, the different tasks and activities that were, uh, we had to do to make this trip happen were uh, sort of uh, uh, helping uh, in all the different areas, thinking and learning to learn, the cultural uh, competence and interaction uh, and self-expression, taking care of oneself and being able to manage daily life, being multiliterate, uh, developing ICT, ICT competences and then of course the working life and uh, uh, entrepreneurship skills and then uh, participating and, and, and being an active member of, of the surrounding community. So um, these were, these are things that we are now continuing to develop with the, with the school and, and uh, ho hope, to, hope to continue with the, with the exchange uh, between Finland and Korea. Um, the, um, in, in Finland, I also want to mention that in Finland we usually have um, the teacher who is, uh, the history and social studies teacher is usually the one who is responsible for the entrepreneurship education. So I'll be working together with that, that uh, um, teacher uh, in the near future. A quick, still a few, few words about how companies and schools and universities are, are becoming more uh, close uh, in Finland. Uh, of course, um, uh, for the entrepreneurship education, there are company representatives who uh, act as mentors. They come to schools to tell about their, their uh, uh, work, but they also have students come to visit their office. They provide internships and work-life experience uh, uh, programs. They do, in universities, a lot of thesis work. Uh, companies have uh, students do a thesis for them. And then also uh, in the city of Espo there is actually this living lab program where, where they are really actively looking for companies and schools to work on, on joint projects. So my entrepreneurship education program is one example of. And also we have uh, this artificial intelligence online course which is offered by Helsinki University and, and Reactor. And then the last question, why do companies want to, want to be involved with schools? Well, employer branding is one very important uh, uh, aspect. And then uh, to test the candidates um, that, that they might want to employ. They need to be connected with their future customers and, and consumers. And they want to be involved in developing the curriculums of, of the schools to ensure that they will have the right kind of uh, skills in the future. So, thank you so much for, for your attention. Uh, as, as mentioned in the beginning, I'm writing a, a, book, uh, a book about the Finnish entrepreneurship education and the startup and innovation ecosystem. So, if you have, you know, in 20 minutes I cannot explain everything, so if you have any other questions, uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email and it will be very valuable uh, input for our, our book project. So um, with that I will uh, say thank you, Kamsa Hamnida, and then hopefully I'll hear from you. Thank you.